something new. So doing the best we can here. Start. Close yes, up. I'm sure I want to start. Sync to pre. All right. So looks like we are joining now finally on our live stream Q and A. Ask me anything. Monday nights with Monday nights with Mike. We're live stream over here on YouTube and uh, yeah. So, as I said, we're trying something new, so that's why we're a little bit late today, a little technical difficulties. My first time using my laptop because we have some new little things. You can see on the bottom here, we can see right here on the bottom, as I'm pointing over here, <laughs> all this fun stuff. But we're also going to have a little bit more interactive content available, possibly. So, this here allows me to see a little more on the analytics end, and I can see a little bit deeper what we're doing. So Shoshana, what's up? How you doing? Um, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the delay, guys. You know, just like I said, it's my new thing we're trying out here. I'm able to open up some windows. You'll be able to see certain things. If I need to search anything, we can actually find it along with it. But uh, yeah. All right. So what kind of questions we have going on tonight? Hold on, yeah. What do you got for me, Shoshana? You, you're the first one in, so let's see what you got. Excuse me. Oh, so, right, I see. I got yeah. four. I got four people watching here. It's, it's saying so. Who else we have on? Somebody say something. Help me out here. All right. Well, while I'm waiting for you guys to put something in and say what's up, so couple of questions I had going on. Uh -huh, here we go. Followed your advice on certain do's and don'ts. Went to the doctor and dropped 10 pounds so far. That is awesome. We're trying to lose, right? <laughs> so I know you were dealing with some of the edema from a number of different sources, but uh, that's good to hear. I like to hear it. So <laughs> I always like to hear that though. I always like to hear good things. All right. Let's see. So right now, we're also going to talk about, um, like I said, I have a client who I'm working with right now who dealing with a number of different things. <laughs> Think about a question. Yeah, thank you. Um, who's dealing with a number of different things, how was on a statin drug, and because of that, energy levels were super low, and concurrent, uh, subsequently got him onto some CoQ10. Let's see how this light looks here. Does that look any better? That better light? Like I said, guys, sorry. Change up the, uh, the style we're doing here. Throwing me off here. All right, I like that a little better. You let me know. So, yeah. Essentially, statin drugs, a major problem with them is they mess with your CoQ10 levels. The reason being is that CoQ10 is being produced on the same pathway as cholesterol. So while statin drugs will go and lower your cholesterol, and it seems like that's a good thing, right? The problem with that is that it's also going to lower your CoQ10. Now, why is that a problem? Well... CoQ10 is an independent risk factor for issues with your heart health, meaning that if you have deficiencies in CoQ10, you very well could end up with some serious heart problems. So by taking a statin drug, you're kind of cutting off your nose to spite your face because when you take it, like I said, you're opening yourself up for more of a risk to lower what could be a risk, which as we've talked about a number of different occasions, do not believe that don't believe that cholesterol independently of itself outside the context of high inflammation is going to be a problem. So because of that, if we're talking about someone who is on statin drugs and you're not taking CoQ10, you're going to have a number of problems. You're definitely going to want to make sure that you're taking in CoQ10 to at least make up for that because it's essential for energy production, mitochondrial function, particularly in your heart. So definitely want to take care of that. Now, what else we got going on here? While I'm waiting for those questions to come in. All right, here we go. So Ricky just can't sleep more than four hours a night. Advil or Tylenol PM make him sluggish during the day. What would you help recommend him uh, to remedy his sleep cycle? Very, very good question. So regarding what we can do in terms of sleep cycle. I like to do a number of different things. First of all, I like to focus on uh, correcting your circadian rhythm. I'd also go and focus on making sure that you are 
managing your stress. Now, those are two kind of obvious ones. But another one is I'd actually make sure that you're getting in the sun. What? That's right. So by getting in the sun, that, again, helps to maintain your circadian rhythm. In the morning, getting in the sun will help to actually turn on the cortisol production a little bit, enough that it's saying, all right, it's morning, wake up. And then later on in the day, when mel when you want the melatonin to kick in, that will be a little better. It's a little bit, that was a little bit of a gross way of saying it in terms of like a poor way of wording that, but essentially getting in the sun during the day is going to be a good thing. But from there, I'm a big fan of adaptogenic herbs, in particular ashwagandha, potentially CBD, uh, as well as rhodiola cordyceps, potentially some magnesium. In fact, I actually have a video on that. And uh, you know what we're going to do? In order to show you some of my new toys I've been playing around with, I've been working on this earlier in the day, what I'm going to do is show you this. Let's see how this works. We're going to go here. And then we're going to go over here. Boom. Bink. So, insomnia. Ding, ding. So yeah, if you look here, I have two videos already on the topics of sleep quality. So how can we improve sleep quality and how do I beat insomnia? So definitely check those out. And what I will do is I will go and I will take that. I will post it into I'll post it into the description. So yeah, one of my neat little new tools that I'm playing around with right there. Let's see, live chat. Dink. There's one. Huh. Interesting. So I'm looking at it right now. It appears that I have a little bit of a delay on that. Okay. So yeah, posting that in the de description there. And then I'm going to go to the other one and we'll post this one in there dink dink all right so glad glad that you are enjoying the new one so yes uh magnesium is in raw almonds absolutely cacao is an excellent source so some chocolate you know some nice dark chocolate would be a good idea and what else um just magnesium in general so oh man blanking out right now so you know what let's go to the tape in terms of what are some of the best sources of magnesium just because i'm enjoying this too much i think all right let's go to the tape magnesium here you go world's healthiest food is actually a decent resource in terms of some of the best types of uh oh, oop think some of the best sources of it. So let's see what we got here. Pumpkin seeds are number one in terms of magnesium to calorie ratio to overall uh, sufficiency. So rather magnesium per serving. Spinach is an excellent source. Swiss chard. I'd probably stay away from the soybeans as we've talked about on a number of occasions, but sesame seeds, quinoa, not the biggest fan, but you know, if you like it, great. If you do tolerate it well, same thing with black beans. If you tolerate them well, Soaking them, sprouting them, probably not going to be that big of a deal. Cashews, sunflower seeds, and same thing with navy beans. Just like all of the legumes, if you're dealing with something like that, you know, could be okay. Probably not the biggest deal. Just make sure you prepare them properly. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so going back to over here. Alrighty. <coughs> Excuse me, not my day. So actually, what I'm also going to do, I'm going to pull up real quick. Let's pull up on this one. Pretty sure I have a video on magnesium as well. If I don't, I'm going to have to make sure I do one on magnesium. So let's find out. Hey. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Gonna have to do a video on magnesium. <laughs> Add that to the list. Make sure you remind me. Okay. All right. Let's go back to main screen. Okay. So thoughts on how much caffeine is too much caffeine every day. Some people like 
<laughs> Mickey <laughs> drinks five cups a day, if not more. I suggest a detox to sort of reboot. Thoughts? It's a great question. So personally, I definitely am a big coffee fiend myself. I'm, you're in good company right there, Ricky. Totally with you on that. Now, regarding coffee, I actually have a video on that. So, again, because I'm enjoying these new toys too much, let's pull that bad boy up. And, in fact, what I'm going to do, let's see if this works. Okay. Da -da -ding, my videos. Now, I have a, uh, multiple on coffee here. What the heck? <laughs> Good bulletproof coffee, coffee enemas, that's a fun one. Should you be drinking coffee? Now, nah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this one up here. Now, let's see if this works. Put the audio on. Gayman.com. And today's question is, should you be drinking coffee? That's yeah. I think that's, well, that's end, end up doing is going to end up having a reverb, so that's not really a good thing. Let me see if I added the. Uh, oh, funny enough, I'm wearing the same shirt today. Look at that Long Island MMA tank top, the coffee, coffee edition. <laughs> I love it. So, I'll put links to this. So, I'll answer short version for today is essentially that when it comes to coffee. There's something of a bell curve. And what I mean by that is that up to about two cups a day, generally going to see a lot of benefit, actually. It has cognitive benefit. It has just general health, some antioxidants. It's a very rich source of antioxidants. So not that big, uh, not that much of a problem. Where we start to see problems in most people is after that, three, four cups a day, five cups a day could potentially be problematic in certain individuals. Now, with that being said, what I see to be a big benefit is having up to that point, so up to that like two a day, basically watering it down after that. Now, certain people are fast metabolizers. They're able to do a little bit better on a little bit more, meaning that their body clears it out a little quicker. So other than that, not that big of a deal. <laughs> yeah, Megan says I need the bun to complete the outfit. Yes, I need to. Sorry, it's gone. Don't have to tell you. <laughs> Actually, funny enough, um, was it the the bun started? I started growing my hair the night I fought Ricky. Funny enough, so when I had the top knot, I grew it from. I the last time I had shaved my hair before I grew that was the night of weigh-ins. Because that was a tradition for me. Every time before weigh-ins, I would, sh would sh buzz the head. So, funny enough, that bun made it all the way to that video, all the way past that video, from the night that I fought Ricky. Because it started growing, obviously, after I cut it the night before. <laughs> so, anyway, coffee, up to two cups a day. If you are a fast metabolizer, meaning that you process it pretty quickly, not that big of a deal, you'll be all right. Don't worry about uh, it up to that. Generally speaking, coffee is not going to be that big of a deal uh, for most people. So probably if if you have to drink to five cups a day, it's probably indicating some type of issue, generally speaking. Personally, I just enjoy the taste of coffee. So that's kind of like, eh, whatever. <laughs> All right. Am I muted right now? Did my Was my sound off? Did you hear any of that? Was I just wandering and not saying anything? Let me know. Because I definitely hit a button that I feel like might have not done something. <laughs> so, no, the fact that you're saying wow probably indicates that I was, in fact, still talking. So, that's good. <laughs> nice. All right. So, Megan's question. Are there alternatives to antibiotics? Are we talking about internal or external antibiotics? And that's going to end up with a tape delay in terms of that. Um, provided we're talking about external, then yes. Well, that's a lie. If we're talking about internal or external, there are alternatives. Absolutely. Um, the answer to that question is really going to depend on what you try to look at. In terms of internal, I'm leaning more towards probiotics and some natural antimicrobials, things like grapefruit seed extract, things like uh, berberine, things like... Uh, Wow, I'm just blanking out right now. Sorry. Uh, Mylorc acids or coconut oil type based stuff is good antivirals. 
uh, depending on, again, depends on what we're looking for specifically. Oil of oregano is a good one. Echinacea, internal. So yeah, oil of oregano, echinacea, uh, grapefruit seed extract, uh, which again, one of my most popular ones. So hold on, let's pull, let's go to the tape. Hold on. Tink, tink. Hey, I know that guy. This guy's top knot and stuff. What the heck? Oh yeah, duh. So if we go back one here, uh -huh. type in antibiotics. <laughs> the eating your boogers one, that's a fun one. Should you ever be taking pharmaceutical antibiotics? Now with that one, <laughs> yeah, that one's a fun one in terms of when could be a potential to take it. But the, should you be taking antibiotics when you're on, or rather, should you be taking probiotics when you're on antibiotics? And the answer to that one's definitely. Uh, sore throats. And that one you know, talks about a little bit. <laughs> Did your stuffy nose cause your health problems? That one's about how antibiotics can end up being the cause of a lot of other issues. Can lead to gut dysbiosis and whatnot. But some of the other ones, like I said, berberine is a excellent one. So things like golden seal, bayberry, barberry will all contain berberine, but you can also pick up some berberine in and of itself by itself. Uh, other ones, like I said, grapefruit seed extract, not grape seed extract. That's an excellent one as well right here. Oh, grapefruit seed. Apparently I can't spell, so bear with me here. <laughs> grapefruit seed extract right there is a good one. Oh, and that one's got 499 views. Let's get it to... Let's get that one to 500, guys. Come on. <laughs> Let's put that one right at 500. Hold on. Dink. Oh, man. But, yeah, grapefruit seed is like my, one of my go-tos. If I feel like a cold coming on, I definitely jump right on that. Echinacea, I guess that is another one that I would definitely recommend. Have I never done a video on Echinacea? Really? Okay, let's add that to the list. Okay, hold on. Since I actually need to be putting out some more content again, I've been like, with school and stuff, I've been slacking a little bit more than I would like to in terms of that. So, Echinacea? So that's got a lot of solid literature on it. Echinacea, magnesium. Okay. Okay. Yeah, definitely grapefruit, definitely magnesium. Okay, where are we in the comments section? Awesome. Internal. Those would be some good bets overall. No videos were found. Hey, go back now. How long are we on? So, what else we got for me right now? Been live for 10 minutes? That doesn't seem right. <laughs> oh boy. What other questions we got coming out, guys? All right, well, while I'm waiting on you guys, I actually had posted yesterday on Instagram a, I had posted a, what do you call it? I had posted a giveaway. And what the giveaway was, was going to be a jar of fire cream and a Mike the Caveman t-shirt. Ask Mike the Caveman t-shirt, an official shirt. So, unfortunately, not as many people popped on as I would have liked. But, you know, I've made a promise and I keep on my promises. I promised that I would announce it today. Now, a bit of a slacker in terms of promoting that, I guess, you know, especially since I'm on Facebook right now. But here's the deal. Um, while I'm waiting for you guys to give me some comments, what I will do is I will show you. Oh, come on. Some of the shirts here. And what is going on? Why is it making me? There we go. 
So yeah, what I will do, I'll show you the store real quick. Oh, and this one. Ask. Hey, couldn't find the store. Wait a minute, that's not good. What the heck store is this then? I'm just losing it right now. So, we have our shirts here. <laughs> Change it up based on different colors. Also, the women's cuts. <laughs> That's what the okay, man. It says it right there. Why the heck would that not be a store? I don't know. But then there's also for the uh, Game of Thrones fans amongst you. <laughs> yeah, so shout out. The giveaway was on... The giveaway was on uh, Instagram yesterday. I will totally do another one. So, you know, I will officially announce. So, because no one else really did it, my buddy James is going to get the jar of fire cream and his choice of one of these two shirts, of one of these ones here. But what I will do is I'll do another giveaway. I'll announce tonight that we will do a giveaway next week. What it's going to be, haven't decided yet. But definitely going to do... Uh, you're going to do something good. We'll do something good. I'll make it. Sh I'll share it out early this week and get it going for next week. That way people have a time to actually go and participate. But, yep, may I officially make the announcement. James, congratulations. You are the winner because you followed the rules. <laughs> no, nobody else did. All right. So, by default. All right. Thoughts on EAS protein? Good question. Let's take a look on what we have going on here. <laughs> Ingredients. Protein. So our ingredients include whey protein concentrate, whey protein, oh, soy lecithin, corn maltodextrin, <laughs> cocoa powder, processed and natural alkali, uh, natural artificial flavor, salt, whey protein isolate, carrageenan, xanthan gum, asulfame potassium, and sucralose. So the big problems we see here are these ones at the end, as well as the corn maltodextrin and the soy lecithin. Now, of the soys, what happens is the lecithin is probably the least problematic. It's not, it's not going to be necessarily allergenic. It's not going to have the phytoestrogens in it. In and of itself, it's really not that big of a deal. The corn maltodextrin here, that, again, of the corns, probably not the biggest deal in the world. It's not great to see it. When you start seeing those things, it's generally meaning that it's a filler. And why do you need to have the filler? Just so you can have a bigger container and show, oh, I have more protein. I have more, you know, I have a bigger container. You kind of, you're cutting your ingredient, you know, so you're not getting as much. While the weight is more, you're not getting as much protein, that much actual benefit out of it. So, eh. Cocoa powder is fine. Natural artificial flavors generally is all right. A little salt, not necessarily that big of a deal. The carrageenan is where things get a little squirrely because there's actually literature indicating that carrageenan, which, if you remember, was the seaweed that was in our milk because it helps to, it helps to uh, clear things out, actually is associated with inflammation. So, let's see. Carrageenan, gut inflammation. That's my fault. Excuse me. So as we see here, <laughs> carrageenan induced colitis associated with decreased population of anti-inflammatory bacterium in the gut microbiota. Now it's a study in mice, but you know, it still helps to show it there. Essentially, what it's showing is that that carrageenan can go and cause gut dysbiosis we always talk about it's one of my biggest things i'm always always ranting and raving about same thing here so lactobacillus fermentum basically a probiotic 
attenuates, it helps to reduce the inflammation in mice by inhibiting that pathway. So good thing. Dietary fate of di digestive fate of dietary carrageenan, evidence of interference with digestive proteolysis and disruption of gut epithelial function. There's another one right there. These are all brand new studies. If you look at the dates, March 2017. So what that's basically trying to say, again, this is without even going into the abstract, but just from the titles alone, essentially, the dietary carrageenan, what's happening there? When it interferes with digestive proteolysis, lysis means the breakdown of, proteo refers to protein. So carrageenan, carrageenan can be interrupting with the digestive, uh, can be interfering with the breakdown of proteins and can disrupt the lining of your gut, your gut epithelial layer. Now again, let's open this one up and see what it says real quick. The objective of the study is to interrogate the two mechanisms in which commercial carrageenans may adversely affect human health through modification of gastric proteolysis and through affecting gut epithelial structure and function. So reading through that, mixed in milk, soy, or egg protein isolates, which is exactly what we're talking about right now, then subjected them to a semi-dynamic in vitro digestion model. So it's in a cell. It's not actually being done to a person right here. But what they found is that the cacao 2 cells model were used to explore the various effects of the physiologically digested CGN, which is the carrageenan, the little name they gave to it, on the endothelial function, so oh, sorry, epithelial function, as well as the epithelial barrier. It resulted in uh, a redistribution of the tight junction protein zonula accumulans. And if you look into that, there's something called zonulin, and it's very commonly seen in, uh, it's very commonly seen when we're talking about things like gluten, when gluten sensitivity, that's kind of what, uh, there's work of Dr. Sal Fasano, and he was one of the ones that first kind of made that happen, how zonulin can actually go and interfere with intestinal permeability, with tight junction function. <laughs> tight junction function, yeah. Anyway, ranting aside, essentially, it can go and induce increases of intestinal permeability by way of inducing elevated levels of interleukin-8 receptor. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, sorry. The pro-inflammatory interleukin-8 receptor, CXCR1. Anyway, short version of what that's saying, again, is that that carrageenan can go and cause damage to your epithelial layers. This work raises the possibility that carrageenan may reduce protein and peptide bioaccessibility, which I always generally refer to as bioavailability, but same thing. Essentially, the ability of your body to absorb those proteins and their broken down peptides. It may also, in that same process, disrupt your normal epithelial function, basically the maintenance of your lining. What that means is it's going to prevent... So yeah, so the first part is the bioavailability. The second part is it'll disrupt your normal epithelial function, meaning that it will prevent uh, the normal barriers. So the way your skin is supposed to keep bacteria out of your bloodstream, normally your gut lining will do the same. It'll prevent garbage from getting through. It'll promote intestinal inflammation, which in turn can lead to more problems with your gut bacteria because <laughs> basically said, uh, being said, if things are getting through that shouldn't be getting through because of the weak leaky gut and the actual inflammation in and of itself, you're going to end up with endotoxemia, not a good thing. And then the result and result consequently compromised consumer health. Now, to be clear, this is an in vitro study. This was not one that was done in humans. But again, it's another one of those ones where showing that carrageenan could potentially be a problem. Moving past that, acyl and potassium and sucralose. Both of those are artificial sweeteners. And again, just pulling it up, artificial sweeteners, gut microbiome. <laughs> just to make a fair, uh, review of the effects of polyols. Now, polyols are actually the sugar alcohols like erythritol, uh, <laughs> erythritol, xylitol, mannitol, Sorbitol, I feel like I'm missing one or two, whatever, not a big deal, but hey, look at this one, IBS, somebody I know on here might want to know about this one, polyols found in certain sugar alcohols, vegetables, and sugar-free sweeteners, they have a uh, decent component of fermentable oligo dimonosaccharides and polyols, which are collectively known as the FODMAPs, I added that little adjunct into this here, 
but basically depending on limited research on that they can be induce a dose dependent symptoms including flatulence abdominal discomfort laxative effects consumed by both healthy and healthy volunteers and patients with ibs now interesting on that i covered that this one's a brand new study this is july 14th of this year so this is what a month old very similar to <coughs> something i covered about a year ago right? it was one of my first videos essentially talking about gluten sensitivity and whether or not it is a real thing and what i was talking about was so does non-celiac gluten sensitivity actually exist and in that video I actually discussed why it may actually be FODMAPs that are the problem. And this study right here kind of goes and backs that one up. But that's the video we can talk about. Yeah, we can take a look at that right there and see what you think. All right. Analytics back on. All right. But going back to the screen here. So... The acyl and potassium, the sucralose, both could have similar problems there. Uh, yeah, there you go. Artificial sweetener, acyl and potassium, affects the gut microbiome and body weight gain in CD1 mice. The effects of low-dose, non-caloric sweetener consumption in mice. And you know what? Just for funsies, let's see if there are any clinical trials right now. Aha! There we go. Widespread sucralose exposure in a randomized controlled, uh, randomized clinical trial in healthy young adults. Effect of, and, and hey, this goes back to your question, Megan. Effective antibiotics on gut microbiota, gut hormones, and glucose metabolism. Funsies. <laughs> so first, the, uh, the non-caloric low-dose sweeteners in, uh, in mice. Let's see what it says. Provide sweet taste to food without adding calories and glucose. Uh, Non-caloric sweeteners can be added as alternative sweeteners for controlling blood glucose levels and weight gain. Although they have increased over the past decade in Japan and other countries, whether these sweeteners affect the composition of the gut microbiome is unclear. And that's true. The literature on it has been uh, conflicting. There has been some saying that it will. There have been ones that say, eh, maybe not. So in this study, what they did, they examined the effects of sucralose and acylphate potassium ingestion up with up, upwards to 15 milligrams per kilogram body weight, which essentially speaking, if you were to convert that out to humans, let's say we had a 150 pound male, which would essentially be about 70 kilograms, give or take, um, you know, about 154 technically speaking, but whatever, 70 kilograms. What that would do is you would multiply that 15 milligrams by 70, which would put us at what? My math is not strong right now. It's 35, what, 105? No, 1,005. Wow. Somebody help me out with the math here. I'm shot. 15 times 70. So it'd be 35, 0, 70. I can't do math right now. I'm I'm failing hard on this. Math isn't my thing. 1050. So I was saying 105. Duh, I was forgetting the last zero because I'm an idiot. Sorry about that. So, yes. That would be about 1 gram. So at a dose of equivalent to 1 gram of acylphane potassium for a person who was 150 pounds, which again, that's a pretty strong dose overall, but for 150 pound male is what is the equivalent thereof. It's showing that consumption of sucralose, but not acylphane potassium uh, for eight weeks reduced the relative amount of clostridium cluster uh, in the feces. Meanwhile, sucralose and acylphane potassium did not increase food intake, body weight gain, or liver fat or fat in the epididymis or cecum. Only sucralose increase increased the concentration of hepatic cholesterol and colic acid. Moreover, the relative concentration of butyrate and ratio of primary to secondary bile acids, aluminum metabolites, increased with uh, sucralose consumption. So, in this particular study, interestingly enough, it said it may have an issue because the daily intake of, uh, of that may may affect the amount of clostridium in the fecal microbiome and cholesterol metabolism. So basically, it can change the microbiota. It can change the bacteria that are in there as well as change the way that your body is breaking down cholesterol. So not necessarily the best thing overall. That particular study here, kind of less problematic. You know, it's one of the ones that might support its use slightly more. <clears throat> but overall, still not the biggest fan.
So let's look at some of the other research real quick. All right, and this is basically what I end up doing for those of you who wonder, how does White the Caveman know so much? Part of it is I will go and just actually read that. Now, to be clear, I'm generally not just reading the abstracts because I'm kind of just trying to go through this quickly without having to go through all of it. But essentially what I would do is I would go and take that. I would go to the actual thing and I would go towards... Oh, this one's a paid one. Now, what's nice about that is the fact that I'm still in school, right? So a lot of these, let's see if we have access to it. Very nice. So what we do is, fortunately for myself, and you know what? I'm not going to log in right now. Or, yeah, duh. What I can do is I go back to here. <laughs> Would rather not just put my login information directly on there. <laughs> now, simply because this is something that, because I'm in school, I'm not supposed to share everything about that, but as you can see here, what I would normally do is I would go to a study like this and I would go and read through the study and I'd read through a bunch of those and that's how I helped to formulate my opinions on that. So this is, a, again, brand new study. This was done in April. It was published in April of 2017 in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. And so what they did is they took uh, low, street, uh, low calorie sweeteners, LCSs, and, and they, they did is they, huh, although consumption limits are based on toxicological safety are well established, the threshold required to exert clinically, metabolic, uh, clinically relevant metabolic effects is unknown. So what we did here is they took individuals who do not report consumption of them and whether they could be, uh, sorry, they, <laughs> trying to read it too fast. I'm sorry for that. Let's rewind for a second. What they did is they characterized those as unexposed and investigated whether the instructions to avoid them are effective in minimizing exposure to them. So what they did is they took 18, 18 to 35 year old non-consumers, those who consume less than one of those per day, and they examined their effects on the gut microbiota. So the trial consisted of three visits at the baseline. Participants were counseled extensively about avoiding low calorie sweeteners. After run-in, the participants were randomly assigned to consume a diet Soda consuming sucralose or carbonated water, which is a control, meaning there was no sucralose in it. It was basically just seltzer. Three times a day for one week. Food diaries, food diaries were maintained throughout the study, and a spot urine sample was collected each visit. So that's interesting. A lot of times, we're looking at research, and we're looking at epidemiological studies, and when they do that, they don't actually... They're not actually giving you real data. This is a clinical trial in the sense that there was a control group, there is the actual group, and what they're doing is spot urine actually helps to show whether or not the people were complying. That's a big problem in epidemiological research is the fact that these food frequency questionnaires or even food diaries, people lie. And because they lie, unfortunately, a lot of times you don't have the most accurate data. The beautiful thing about the urine collection is that you can actually test from the metabolites of the sucralose. So you can tell, did they actually drink that? So that's a way to verify. So that's actually a really good design right there. Now at baseline, eight participants had sucrose, sucralose in their urine, whereas, so at baseline, eight of them had that. After the run-in, sucralose was found in eight individuals, two of them who did not have detectable sucralose at baseline and range from 25 to 1,000 nanograms per milliliter, which is basically, <laughs> 0 .00, 0 0.025 and 1.026 milligrams per milliliter. But anyway, only one participant reportedly consumed, uh, reported consumption of an LPS uh, containing food before her visit. After intervention, sucrose was detected in three individuals randomly assigned to receive the sugar, uh, randomly assigned to receive the carbon dioxide. Wow, not my night. Tired from jits. Sorry, guys. 
<laughs> assigned to receive the carbonated water. And what that's saying is, so the seltzer, one person who, or like three people who were supposed to receive the seltzer still had sucralose in their urine. So what this was saying is that despite the selection of healthy volunteers with mineral exposure, more than one third were exposed to sucralose at and or before, sorry, at baseline and or before randomization. And nearly half were exposed after control. This shows that instructions to avoid low calorie sweeteners are not effective and that non-dietary sources such as personal care products may be important contributors to overall exposure. Interesting. So this is some brand new research. I may have to do a full video on this alone. Let's add that to the list because I'm going to break the study down. I'm, I'm really going to dive deeper into this. But short version of what they're saying now that I've actually read it. Basically, they took these people, these 18 people, and told them don't have it beforehand. And they they uh, surveyed them to make sure that they, didn't, they weren't regular consumers, quote unquote. And what they did is they observed them. Some of them were given sucralose, some were given seltzer. And even the people who had seltzer were still registering as significant amounts in their urine. And the thing is, why is it in their urine if they're not consuming it? And they've been advised what to avoid. So it's a big thing for a lot of times I tell people, don't eat these artificial sweeteners. Don't eat these things like this. And you may not even pay attention to it. And even these people who have been counseled on it still somehow are getting in the urine. So I'm going to I'm gonna save this one. Let's save. Hold on. Fold.pdf. Excuse me. Bear with me for a second here as I save this one. I'm probably going to turn that into a full video. Let's do that one. I am intrigued. I'm sure none of you care at this point. Comment if you do, I guess. But the long and the short of what this rant is going on as we're going through a little bit of that is the sugar alcohol is that the sugar alcohols are generally not too bad. The artificial sweeteners could be a problem. Now, uh, Megan, going back to your antibiotics question here, talking about what it can do, why it could be a problem. Effective antibiotics on the gut microbiota, gut hormones, and gut metabolism. Essentially speaking, as evaluated by selective cultivation of gut bacteria. A broad spectrum four day antibiotics course with vancomycin includes induced shifts in gut microbial uh, biota composition that had no clinically relevant short or long term effects in healthy, healthy glucose tolerant males. So, short term speaking, what it's happening is that it is actually causing a change in the gut microbiota, but fortunately, it's not changing their overall glucose tolerance, so their ability to metabolize glucose afterwards. So, that's good. In this particular case, they were able to come back. These healthy individuals were able to, uh, who were not previously diabetic, were able to come back from that damage. But hey, cool. Good to know. All right. Let's come back to my ooh, weird looking face, right? Awesome. All right. What kind of questions we got now, guys? How long are we in the chat at this point? I feel like. What I saw on my analytics was lying to me. That could be wrong, but maybe it's not. Let's pull that bad boy back up. Yeah. Okay, now it's saying 40 minutes. That seems more accurate. Did I really? Did I really not go live until 11 minutes after? I could have sworn that I was on after, before that. Eh, whatever. All right, so what kind of questions we got, guys? Shoshana and Megan, you guys had some great questions. Hopefully, they my answers have been beneficial to an extent, and hopefully, you enjoyed some of the little tweaks we've been doing so far. But um, yeah. Let me see if I can still even hear myself. Let's pull that bad boy back up. Yeah. Okay, now it's All right. So what else do we have, guys? Uh, while I'm waiting for you guys to throw some comments down, let's go to the tape. Let's see if I got anything. Does this mean? <laughs> All right. I feel like I've had some new questions recently. I mean, I generally do. Gotta see what the questions are. I feel like I was asking earlier. I generally again. I know. I know Debbie and Cappy has definitely asked me something. 
trying to think what. Hmm. Well, you know, at this point, guys, we are about like 40 minutes in, I guess, apparently, because it took that much longer. Um, I don't have that much to talk about right now. Prepare. That's my fault. I spent most of the day uh, that I wasn't training people or training myself. You know, I took jits earlier, learning how to use this thing. Probably should have done that earlier. Meh, whatever. I mean, I'm pretty happy how it turned out. I like the general outlook of it. Now, I'm trying to figure out there. Yeah, it's not the right size. Thank you for bearing with me through my <laughs> technical difficulties, though, and trying to figure this nonsense out in terms of how, how this works. But, <laughs> oh, man. What other questions we got? Otherwise, we may start calling. I, I see there's five on right now. Who else is on? Shoshana and Megan call, killing it on the questions. Got a couple of lurk. Oh, we got four now. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Back to five. Okay. Errors. Nope. So showing no errors. That's good. Despite all my nonsense. <laughs> and is that link working? What the heck? I don't even know. <laughs> all right. So. Oh, sweet. Rich, oh, so you're one of my lurkers, huh, man? All right. <laughs> one of my lurkers. Uh, breakdown. So yeah, I'm glad that you really like that. I since I learned how to use this a little better, I'm really enjoying the ability to add in this. And if people are interested in that, I would love to do actual study breakdowns. If you guys, if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know. That's something that I definitely would enjoy doing. Um, for now, a friend, uh, for a good friend of mine. <laughs> What's the uh, meme with that? Hold on. Hold on, asking for a friend. <laughs> Hold on. Alright. Huh. Oh, come on, really? Hey, right, let's pull that there. I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> Alright, that's enough of me being an idiot and being mean. Alright, let's pull this back. <laughs> uh, negative effects of some cheaply, some more cheaply made energy drinks. Cheap ingredients, imbalance of levels. Now, honestly speaking, I'm not a big fan of energy drinks in general for a number of reasons. Uh, part of it has to do with the fact that generally they're going to have acetylene potassium. They're going to have sucralose. And that straight shot of sugar isn't necessarily the best bet. So you know what? Let's uh, pull this up here. Energy drinks. I'm going to post this right here now. Remind me in the future to actually take like a... To take a... a time, so I should take a little notes real quick and write like timestamps of when I actually talk about some of these nonsense. But regarding that, I think that's this video right here regarding whether or not you should be having energy drinks so that was episode whatever the hell number it is who the hell cares <laughs> this one right here should you be drinking energy drinks <laughs> and the answer's a 201 wow going way back in the way back machine but yes so i posted the link to that short answer not really a big fan 
of energy drinks. In terms of ways of achieving that energy in the morning, that coffee we talked about before. <laughs> no, really. He never likes to hear that they can truly be evil. <laughs> <laughs> unless there are some fully organic ones which are, can, are actually effective right so in terms of ways that i would like that i would generally try to achieve more energy in the morning okay would, number one would be something like synchro gold all right this here is an absolute amazing one that i love a lot and it's one that <laughs> it's one that I wish I had an affiliate link for, because the fact of the matter is, it's a great product. Unfortunately, I don't, so I'll just put the link in anyway, just because I'm just that nice. <laughs> Synchro Gold is a great way of getting that energy in real quick uh, in the morning. Another one that I am a big fan of is in terms of achieving energy. someone is looking for an energy drink replacement i would go in this way yes coffee definitely definitely coffee I believe that's the right link let's see yes so <laughs> yes so this right here is another one and ah, you, nope, nope, not what we're looking for. Now we're in a double time. Hold on, guys. Oh boy, so much for my technology working. <laughs> Let's go back to me. Well, while I fix my technical difficulties, because apparently I'm not as good as I thought I was yet. No, not what I want. I want that one. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, trying to get this a little better. So yeah, so in terms of a way of getting that or uh, that energy in the morning, definitely a fan of the Keto OS um, as a replacement to energy drinks. But yeah. So Let's see what we got here. Excuse me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All right. Let's go back to my live stream. Let's see what we have here. So, yeah. So, we have the first one, Synchro Gold. Oh, duh. The second one, I got to put the HTTP. Sorry about that. Yeah, T L Y slash Kino. Mm hmm. <laughs> So yeah, let's uh, remove that one because that's stupid. It's not an actual link. <laughs> Message retracted. Awesome. All right. So in terms of replacing those Android, that's definitely a big way for me. Uh, big fan of those. Moving past that. Yeah. Moving past that. You're fired. <laughs> thanks oh man hey i'd say all things considered uh this is my first time and i only learned how to use this thing today i'm doing all right but maybe not all right i'd love to know who my, my other lurker is then because i've had like four to seven i've had the most i had oh no nine most i had current viewers was nine and <laughs> at this i mean at the same time so Bunch of you, you know, have been amazing and stayed on this whole time here. Um, I want to know who my other lurker is. So comment down below. Come on. Let me know who it is. Don't be hiding in the shadows there. Um, I know Jody this week. Jody's normally on here harassing the heck out of me. Hopefully I didn't upset her too much. You know? <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So... Guys, you had some great questions so far, though. Coffee. You're in the clear, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. Lots of questions about coffee, about energy drinks. A lot of fun stuff. What else we talked about? Talked about uh, antibiotics and magnesium. We broke down some studies talking about 
the importance of maintaining your gut microbiome. And uh, yeah, let's keep that rolling, I guess. Definitely enjoy, like I said, breaking down those studies, though. So that's definitely something we'd do more in the future if you guys like that. And definitely planning on doing a version of that uh, giveaway again. Like I said, my buddy James, congratulations, because he's the one that followed the instructions, gets his very own of the official Ask Mike the Caveman t-shirts, which apparently the link may or may not be correct in the... Uh, in my in the description um could somebody actually check that for me that'd be great in the description for this there should be a link to my uh my shirts can you see if that's real because i can't view it on my phone as being squirrely um but yeah otherwise if it is real yeah boom he's gonna get to pick one of the first designs i do have some other designs in mind but you know you gotta start somewhere but yeah i have the the Male and female cuts, as well as children's shirts in the original. And the answer is. And they, I, I got mine the other day. Um, they came in the mail. And they are quite nice, if I do say so myself. They feel amazing. Just saying. <laughs> Shameless plugs. But yeah, so like I said, he's going to get a jar of fire cream. And he's going to get a shirt. I got to figure out what I want to do for... So I, said, I said I would do one next week. That way I'll probably announce it like tomorrow. That way there's more time to actually get involved. Uh, more people can get a chance at it. Maybe I'll do some uh, cashew butter for my friend Mandy at, uh, at uh, Heirloom Kitchen. See if she can uh, get that going. Maybe I'll talk to my buddies at Eating Evolved. Get some chocolate going. Maybe we'll do some Megaspore. Maybe if we get a big one, we'll get really crazy, throw in some CBD. You know, see what we can do. Maybe the Keto OS I mentioned before. Maybe a bottle of Synchro Gold. I got a lot of things I could potentially do as the giveaway. Um, but we'll have that participation. Get that going. So good way to get it going. But, uh, yeah. If you have any other questions, let's put it down below. Uh, while I'm waiting for you guys to do that, you know the deal, though, you know. Thank you for staying along this long. Those of you who show up, much love. Those of you who are watching on the replay, thanks for making this far. And uh, like and subscribe over here. Um, comments, likes, always going to help. It helps to get through so that the video is picked up by other people and people get to see it. Um, other than that, make sure that you share, please. I would truly appreciate it. Let people know. Uh, that's the biggest thing, you know. I'm trying to get the word out there. It's only so much I can do myself, so I need your help. <laughs> so, quick series at the trade. You know, I help to provide some knowledge, some information. You guys get my knowledge to other people. And I like to think it helps out. Maybe it does. Probably doesn't. Whatever. <laughs> so, if that's good on the questions, this is about a solid 50 minutes, so... If everybody's done, I think that's about it. I, I got some good topics now to move forward with. The fact that I haven't done echinacea, that I haven't done magnesium, and I haven't done... Oh, man, come on. I had no one that we were talking about before. What the heck? Oh, there's the study. The, the study on the gut microbiota. That's right. The gut microbiome. There was the study that I just downloaded before. And the artificial sweeteners. But, funny enough, I actually do have a video on that already, kind of. But this would be more of a study breakdown. But, yeah. Absolutely, dude. Uh, much love. Definitely appreciate it. And we do definitely – I know we talk about it every week. We do actually do it. We actually have to figure out a time and get, get it rolling. Um, yeah. All right, guys. I think we're going to cut it here then. I saw, uh, you know, 52 minutes in, give or take. Uh, oh yeah, hopefully this worked out, you know, it's different of a different, uh, change of pace, taking it off the iPad and moving on to the laptop and, uh, yeah. All right. You know the deal. Love you guys. And, uh, I'll see you tomorrow.